the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My dear friends, a most cordial, cordial welcome on a very beautiful day. Even God has given us beautiful weather this morning. And we come and celebrate the great gift of Christ himself. And we celebrate with 12, just like the Last Supper, huh? 12 young people who will receive for the very first time our dear Lord in the Holy Eucharist. A beautiful, wonderful moment, not only for your families, but for the family of the church, and in particular for the family of our parish. And so it's a very beautiful day, a day that we'll always remember, especially on this very beautiful feast day of our Blessed Lady, the day that our Blessed Lady was assumed body and soul at the end of her earthly life, right up into heaven to be with her son and with God our Father. And so it's a glorious day on many, many levels in many, many ways. And because of that, we sing the song of the angels now, the sing of great joy, the song of glory. Almighty and ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul, into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God, forever and ever. Amen. Kindly be seated now as we will hear God's word. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky, it was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurried them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth, to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert, where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper, proper order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when, the, when he hands over the kingdom up to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he subjected everything under his feet. 
the word of the Lord. According to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste, to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. For the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months, and then returned home. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Well, my dear friends, it's been about three months we've been waiting extra, right? We're supposed to have received our Lord in May, but for whatever reason, and reasons we just sometimes don't know, our Lord asked us to wait a little bit and wait till August. And not only in August, but on this very special day of Mary, the Mary, the month of August. And we receive our Lord for the first time in a very beautiful way, as food, as food. I want to ask the 12 of you, do any of you remember the day that the first time you ate McDonald's? No. Do any of you remember the first time that you ate pizza? Right? No. But if you do remember, you think your mom and dad said, listen, Johnny's going to receive his first first pizza today. Let's get all get together, get all dressed up. Did they do that? No. Did they say, hey, Mary's going to receive her slice of pizza at McDonald's the first time? Let's get everybody together. Let's get all the family together for a big old party. Did they do that? So what's so special about today? You look all so pretty and so handsome in your suits and your dresses. Your families are here. So what's so special about today? You're receiving something for the first time, 
It's not really something you're receiving, but someone you're receiving. You're going to receive Jesus for the first time. And he comes to us as bread. Bread. Such an ordinary piece of food, right? Why bread? Why not as a hamburger? Why not as broccoli? Yeah. But he comes to us as bread. Why? Because every culture, every nation, every people has their own sense of bread. Every nationality. So the Irish have what? They have the soda bread, the brown bread. The Italians, oh, the Italians, they have great bread. They have garlic bread. They, the French have the baguettes. The Greeks have pita, right? The Spanish have the tortillas. Everybody has bread because bread is the very basic human food. And we eat bread at least three times a day, right? At breakfast, we have it as toast. Lunchtime, we have sandwiches. At dinner, of course, we have dinner rolls and crescent rolls and Pillsbury Doughboy rolls, everything. We just love bread. And some people love bread a little bit more than others. But bread, it's the very basic food of life. And so when Jesus gathered his 12 apostles for the first time, and he knew that he wasn't going to be on earth forever, he wanted to leave them something to always remember him by. But not just as an old memory, but as real. That he would be actually in the same room as they are. And so at the Last Supper, Jesus took a piece of flat bread, just the same type of flat bread that you guys are going to receive the first time. And he looked at them. And he said, this isn't going to be just like a picture that you hold on as a memory. Or it's not going to be a video. This is going to be my body. This is going to be me. And you're going to take me. You're going to put me in you. Because when you love someone so much, you want to almost climb into them. Now, boys and girls, when you were born... When the first time your grandmother saw you, I bet they said, oh, she and he is so cute, I could just eat them up. Right? You think they said that? <coughs> Probably. Because they want to be part of you. You want to be part of them. So Jesus knew that. And he said, boys and girls, I want to be so much a part of who you are. I'm going to give you as food. Because boys and girls, if you don't eat food, what's going to happen to you? not going to last too long. So we need food for our bodies to make us strong and give us energy to do good things. That's for our bodies. Jesus gives us himself so that we can feed our souls. That's who we are. And boys and girls, when you were baptized, your mom and dad brought you to church. And on the day of your baptism, you were given three beautiful gifts. The gifts of faith, the gift of hope, and the gift of love. And those gifts were like a little seed, baby seed, that was planted in your soul. You have to, when you, when you plant anything, you know, you got to take care of it, you got to watch over it, you got to water it, you got to feed it, you got to make it grow. If not, it just kind of just stays there. But Jesus gives us himself so that we can grow spiritually, that we become holy people. Because that's the basic thing why we're here anyway. And so Jesus gives us himself at the Last Supper as his body. And he says, come, take and eat. Let it fill you up. Let it make you strong. Let it give you the energy to do good things. And so today, boys and girls, for the first time, you're going to come to the table of the Lord and receive the Lord. The first time. The first of millions and millions and millions of times. And I bet you if you ask your grandma and grandpa, they could tell you exactly what happened on the day of their First Communion. First Communion days are days that we always, always remember. And you will always remember this day for a whole host of reasons, most particularly because it's happening in the world, as of today. Now, I remember my First Communion day. It was April 29th, 1967. And back then, boys, we had to wear white suits and white socks, and we had to wear a heavy white shoes called Bucks. And you could only buy these Bucks in one store. It was a shoe store called Buster Brown. 
and they were the only shoe place you could buy these shoes. And they were heavy. I still remember they were heavy shoes. And I have two older brothers. And they got dressed first. I was the last one to get dressed because I had a white suit and a white shirt and a white tie. And my mother said after I got dressed, don't sit and don't move. And then we walked to church together as a family. And we went up the stairs into the choir loft into the uh, school, and there was Sister, Sister Margaret Mary, one of my favorite teachers, said, boys, you stand there and don't even breathe <laughs> until we get to church. Then after church, we were allowed to stand on the grass of the church and take pictures, because before that, we were not ever allowed to walk on the grass. It was a special, beautiful day. And I remember going home and having a big party in the house in the backyard with all my cousins and friends. The day, boys and girls, you'll always remember. It's the day that you receive Jesus for the first time. You receive it on a very beautiful day, a day of the Assumption of Mary, when Mary was taken up into heaven, waiting for us, because that's our hope. Nothing else matters in this world except one thing, that when we die, we die saints. And the Eucharist, the holy body and blood of Christ, helps us to become saints. So we congratulate you. We thank you for your patience for waiting all these months. We thank, of course, your moms and dads for your patience and your example as well. And so, boys and girls, because today is such a special day, we're going to stand now and we're going to recite the creed, the things that we really believe about God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the worlds to come. Amen. With faith, let us now present our petitions to God as we celebrate our first communion mass today. The response is, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for the Holy Church. May it feed us with God's holy word and with the holy bread of the Eucharist, giving us life eternal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Let us pray for our parents, our siblings, our relatives, our friends, our godparents, our grandparents, that they may enjoy the gift of deep faith and peace in their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for all the priests, catechists, teachers, and all who helped us in preparation for our Holy Communion. May God bless them and bestow upon them the gifts they need for happiness and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Let us pray for all the children who today, for the first time, will receive the Lord Jesus in Holy Communion. May they love him with all their hearts and forever live faithfully. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, mercy. have mercy. Let us pray for our dearly departed. May the good Lord grant them mercy, forgiveness, and full blessings 
in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for all of us gathered here. May each of us be grateful for the gift of the Eucharist and experience with faith and love this encounter with our Lord Jesus in Holy Communion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, accept our prayers that with great faith, hope, and love, we offer upon your altar as we receive First Holy Communion with our children and their families today. We make these prayers in the name of your Son, who is our Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Kindly be seated. and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy truth. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts, aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today, the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your Church's coming to perfection. And as a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so, in company with the choirs of the angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. <laughs> of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, 
these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and so entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, supper was in. He took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. made history of faith. and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Margaret, our beloved patroness, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. together as the family of God to pray the prayer that Jesus our brother taught us and so we dare to say our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wake the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. O 
of the kingdom. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be For the reception of Holy Communion, of course, our children will receive Holy Communion first. And after that, those Catholics who are um, spiritually ready to receive our Lord in Holy Communion, we ask you if you could just keep a social distance between you and the person ahead of you. I will be in the middle of the aisle, and Father Clark will be over to the left.
having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you kindly be seated for one last moment. As you know, this day just didn't happen, but it took preparation and, and many, many hours of making sure that everyone is safe and sound. And there's a group of people that I really do want to thank for making this day possible. And the first group of people, I want to thank you especially, because if it wasn't for you, none of us would be here right now. I want to thank you for your example of family life. I want to thank you for your example of great faith. And we really do appreciate and love you so very much, and we know that our children love you as well. So all of you who are grandparents, if you please stand. All our grandparents, if you stand, we want to thank you so very much. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you. And of course, I'd like to thank your teachers who are here today, to thank them for spending hours. You know, it's just not just a matter of the hour and a half that was in class, but all those hours of preparation. And of course, everything was cut short because of the virus. But know that they always loved you and concerned for you. And they're here today to celebrate with you. So catechists and teachers, I want to thank you as well for all that you've done to help us. The and of course, where would we be without our leaders? So I'd like to thank Mrs. Latuka and Mrs. Horgan and her assistant for all the hard work they do and all the many hours behind the scenes that they make everything just right and such, just, such perfect. So we thank you as well uh, for all that you do. And of course, parents, I want to thank you for your, your patience and your dedication and your love. We thank you for your example. Now, children, tomorrow, if you feel comfortable to come to church, I want you to come dressed as you are today. All right, if you come to Mass tomorrow, because I wanted to see the rest of the parish. And we've been praying for you the past couple weeks uh, for this day. And if you come to church tomorrow, dress that way so that can, everyone can see you and realize that you received your first Holy Communion today. So God bless you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful day for the rest of the day. Just a little uh, procedural uh, business. Once Mass is over, the children will process out to the front steps of the church where we'll space ourselves out. We'll have a group picture. And as you notice, there was a man here taking pictures. That picture will be given to you um, as a gift from the parish, as well as the group picture as well. And in each, power, in the, um, in each pew is a little white bag of gifts. And of course, we blessed the candles the other day, and we blessed the Holy Rosary. Also be a certificate that's stating that this day took place. And any time in the future, if you need a future, just call the rectory. And also will be uh, the program so that it has a memory of today. So God bless you, and after Mass, and after the group picture, please take as many pictures as you want outside by the gazebo or anywhere on the property. If you do come back to church, you're more than welcome to do that. We just ask you to have a, a sense of respect for the beauty of the church. Well, God bless you all, and why don't we stand now, we'll have our final blessing, and off we go. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.